Listen, interestingly enough, of course, the popular saying is that there are two things that you cannot choose in Russia, your president and your parents. Uh, but what is critically important is that while Russia is not a democracy, elections have been always very important for the legitimation of President Putin. Every election was serving to show the people that there is no alternative to Putin. And on these elections, uh, this is not simply, is there going to be a candidate? I don't believe that the elections are going to be organized if Putin is running, uh, that uh, he's going to lose the elections. But for the first time, President Putin is going to be challenged, not so much from those who said, why did you start this stupid war? But also of those who are saying, why you are not winning this bloody war? So for the first time, the criticism to Kremlin are coming not simply from the liberal sources, but also from a much more extreme nationalistic position saying, OK, you started, but why are you not winning? And this creates a moment of vulnerability. It also creates a moment of vulnerability because Russian population was kind of quite ready to live with the idea of the special operations, something like the large version of Crimea, uh, where basically the Russian army goes, succeeds in several weeks, and the people are just going to cheer it in the way you're cheering as a football team. But now you have a mobilization, and probably you're going to have a more mobilization, and probably there are going to be more than half a million young men that are going to be thrown uh, to the battlefield, and many of them are going to be killed. This is a different social contract. And from this point of view, President Putin is vulnerable and he should try to find a way to explain to the Russians why this war is taking place. Of course, his major narrative is that he's not fighting Ukraine, he's fighting the West. But if he's fighting the West, what is the victory? And in my view, this story to explain the people what is a victory and why they should suffer is going to be very difficult. And this is why the election campaign is a moment of vulnerability. And my feeling is that the Russian uh, uh, leaders, uh, the Russian leader knows very well this. And when we think about what leaders are offering their people, Zelensky is popular, of course. Uh, he didn't flee, he stayed, he's leading day by day. But at the same time, he's limited in any change he can offer. I'm, I'm, I assume that it's going to be very hard for him to say, look, we should talk to the Russians when facing re-election himself. Totally. And from this point of view, it's very important that for Ukraine, first, it's very important to organize the elections. And listen, it is not easy. You're organizing the elections in a country in which the majority of the population is not living in the places in which they have been living in the day the war started. Some have been emigrated, are they going to vote? Some have been moved because of, uh, of occupation and uh, uh, because of the distractions. So first, and it's critically important for Ukraine to show the infrastructural capacity to organize the elections. And secondly, uh, of course, President Zelensky is very popular, but President Zelensky is very popular because he's telling his own people, I'm not going to go on any compromise. I'm not ready to do any type of a territorial concession. The moment he said, OK, let's see what kind of concession I can do, be sure that there's going to be another candidate which is going to run on the elections and saying, no, this is not what we have been talking about. You have told to the people that we're going to liberate all our territory. And this makes me believe that for the same reasons we discussed about Russia and Ukraine, for both countries, it's going to be very difficult first to have any meaningful negotiations in 2023. And secondly, there is not good even possibility for the conflict to freeze in 2023. Because in the elections in 2024, to a great extent, are defining what is possible and what is not possible. And of course, what is happening on the ground is the most important. And in the wars, what is deciding decisive is really uh, 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 what uh, uh, the armies are doing. But this kind of a very important constraints may it's very clear that President Zelensky is under strong pressure to stay where he is and to do what he has promised to do. And to be honest, this is also true uh, for President Putin, who is insisting we are winning, this is our land, and so on. And obviously, he's not winning at the moment, but he should try to convince uh, his own population that he's doing this. So I'm saying this because this type of a perspective from the elections is not going to tell us what is going to happen, but probably is going to help us to understand what is not likely to happen.